In this video, we're going to replace the power pack and the optical sensor for a 1998 Evinrude 150. I was out on the water the other day and could only achieve about 2,500 RPM. The motor was not producing very much horsepower at all, sounded pretty bad. Uh, so when we got back to the house, uh, first thing I tested was the spark plugs. One bank was firing no problem, the other bank was not firing at all. So after a little internet research and a phone call to a local mechanic, uh, we decided to go ahead and replace the power pack. So I've already ordered that, here it is. New, new power pack, and uh, the installation is pretty straightforward. It's just uh, un, un, taking out the old one, putting the new one in. It comes with a new optical sensor. We're going to replace that as well. Um, and then, of course, new spark plug wires. The optical sensor is located under here, so we'll remove that. It actually mounts from underneath, so there's a little extra dismantling to get to it. This is the wire harness that comes off the power pack, which is located right under here, so we'll remove that cover also. Bolt everything back together. Uh, this project should take about an hour. So the first thing we'll do is remove this protective cover. It's just uh, four screws on either side and then it pops right off. Uh, right here is our power pack. This black piece right here. Uh, this is the coils. There's three sets of coils. One for each two cylinders. Uh, this spark plug wire comes right off here, and then uh, this is the cable right here that comes off of the power pack. So the first thing we're going to remove is these six bolts to get the coils off to access the power pack. I'll leave this top bolt in so the whole assembly doesn't fall. And the only thing you have to watch for is there's a ground wire right here on this bottom bolt. We're going to want to make sure that we install that right where it came from. These just pop right off, just as easy as they come off spark plugs. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, in the same order that they came off. I'm not sure if it matters or not, but just to be sure, we'll line them up right in the same order that we took them off. Another thing to notice is that uh, the top bank goes to the top cylinders, middle, middle, bottom, bottom, so really simple. We'll just pull these off. The only thing left is the uh, wiring connections up top here, so carefully uh, pull these out. And then we're going to have to cut this wire tie. I'll go ahead and let this hang here until I remove uh, these parts so I can get to the optical sensor. So these, these three screws pull this cover off. This is the optical sensor right here. We'll go ahead and remove this plug. Uh, as you can see, this moves freely. This spring pulls it back in. This is the uh, timing ring, I guess is what you would call it. Uh, there's a, a cotter pin on there, or a woodruff key actually, that keeps it in one position. So we really don't have to worry about it. We're just going to make a mental note that it's right here in between the uh, five and the six. We'll remove this bolt and then we're going to have to remove these two retaining screws and uh, I can't see it from here but I think there's three on the other side. We'll remove those and then we'll be able to lift this entire assembly right here off to access the optical sensor from underneath. You had to put it in gear so that this wouldn't spin the motor. Remove this. You do want to be careful not to um, mess with any of these. Uh, this is the low, high, low, high, low RPM, high RPM. Uh, it has to do with the timing and uh, you just really want to make sure that you don't mess with that. We've removed this bolt and then we also went ahead and removed the screws that hold these retaining rings in to lift this off where the optical sensor sits and um, we're not able to get this cover off. I'm worried that we're going to crack it uh, so we're just going to leave it, and I'll have a spare optical sensor if, if it runs well. Uh, if it doesn't run well, then I'll go ahead and order this cover in case I break it when I try to take it off uh, to replace the optical sensor. It's really seized on there. I put some lubricant in here, to some anti-seize, to try to get it to loosen up. Um, I'm, I don't really want to put a gear puller on it because it's plastic, and I think it'll just crack. As I was trying to work it free, I did hear it kind of creak and crack a little bit, so I'm sure I didn't break it, 
but I don't want to push it, especially if there's nothing wrong with that optical sensor anyway. It'll really just be a waste of time. So we're going to uh, finish the installation and leave the old optical sensor in. I'm going to put a couple bolts in uh, just to hold it in place. I'll go ahead and put this top one in and uh, finger tighten it. I'll put the both top ones in. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and put the bottom one in. You can see that these are kind of corroded. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is clean these up with a little corrosion block and some abrasive uh, before I put them together. Spray this with a little corrosion block on each, each one. Clean it up with a uh, abrasive pad. dry them off. I'll do that to all three and uh, that should give a good contact. I am going to go ahead and uh, replace these coils. As you can see this waterproof seal is starting to uh, deteriorate. These are pretty old. I can't imagine uh, them not being original and the motors are 98 so I'm going to reassemble everything so that it uh, so that at least I can get back out on the water but I am going to go ahead and and get these on order and replace them. It goes back uh, just real simple. Um, We'll go ahead and put the bottom one on first. We'll just start the bolts by hand. We'll go all the way through. And then uh, we need to remember that this ground needs to be in here. So there we go. And just to keep it keep it nice, we'll turn that ground right up like that. I've tightened everything up. You can see how it fits uh, really snug. I'm going to uh, clean up these wires and that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll snap these connectors in. I did clean this up with some uh, corrosion block. I uh, cleaned out this and I like corrosion block instead of dielectric grease. It penetrates a little better. Keeps a good seal. So that's all done and then we'll run this right up to the optical sensor. Reroute this under here. And we want to make sure that this uh, operates pretty freely because this will have to move back and forth. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably route this up underneath here like this. There we go. Just squirt a little corrosion block in there and plug that right in. Make sure it's free, which it is. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get the cover back on and uh, hook it up to a hose and see how it runs. We've got everything back together. I uh, went ahead and I didn't replace the spark plugs, but I cleaned them with some carburetor cleaner. They look pretty good. Got this all back together where the power pack is. Optical sensor area is back together even with the old sensor. Got the hose hooked up. I went ahead and turned all the lights on just so you could see better. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, start her up. Thank you. 